Good evening, everyone. Welcome to those of you who are here with us in person and to all of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. We welcome you to our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And we begin with a pre-service meditation for about 10 minutes. And so I'm going to invite you just to get still in your chairs to close your eyes, to turn your attention inward. And you're going to be hearing the God's, the love that I am chant. So it's just the words, God's, the love that I am, repeated over and over again. And you may wish to chant along with the chant or just listen and keep your mind focused on the mantra, God's the love that I am.
And so I invite you to gently bring your awareness back into your bodies, becoming aware of your surroundings. You may want to wiggle your fingers and toes, shrug your shoulders. Take a nice deep breath. And as you release that breath, open your eyes. So again, welcome to those of you who have joined us during the meditation and out there in virtual land. We're so glad to have you here with us this evening for our Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And let's begin with our opening chant led by our wonderful Mary Highland. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hmm. Indeed, God is in this place. Let's turn within and know that at an even deeper level together. As we join together in consciousness, knowing that God is not only in this place, God is everywhere present, that everything in this manifest universe is created out of the nature of God and that nature inhabits all that is, including each and every one of us gathered for this service this evening, whether here in the sanctuary or virtually. I know that God lives and moves and has its being through each of us. And I know that in coming together for this sacred time, we are all awakened to that truth of God being the truth of who we really are at our core. I know that we are awakened by that vibration of love that we share as we come together as a community. I know that we feel that vibration of love flowing through all those who are of service. I know that Mary this evening is a channel through which God flows and uplifts us with her music, with her voice, with the solo she shares with us. And as we gather together in song as a congregation, we feel that sense of connectedness. And I absolutely know that we hear the perfect message of the divine through our beloved practitioner Joanne O'Brien this evening. That Joanne has said yes to spirit, yes to being that vessel through which we hear what we need to hear to awaken to that divine essence of who we really are and to experience that more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks for all the blessings I know that we receive in our time together. And in gratitude, I release this word 
knowing absolutely that our time is blessed, and so it is, and together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> I love that song. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Is that James or Livingston? It's Carol King. Oh, it's Carol King, but didn't one of those guys? Okay, I thought one of those guys did. I love that song. So, hi, everyone. Wow, I take my glasses off, see who all is here. So nice to see you all. It's great to be back, isn't it? Yeah. Yay, good, good, good. Well, thank you for having me. It's been quite some time since I've been up here speaking. Maybe that's for good reason. I don't know what I said last time. <clears throat> but um, so tonight I decided I wanted to talk about resilience. And I want to talk about it for a few reasons. See, I've always had this conflicted relationship with the word resilience um, and the type of person that it actually applies to. You know, people, people have always said to me, oh, you know what, you're resilient, you'll be fine, you're resilient. And I think, you know, what does that really mean to you? Do you actually know what it means for me to be fine? Because I don't know what it means for you to be fine. So I don't know what your version of resilience is. <clears throat> I have always associated it with these grand comebacks, you know, the ones that we hear about that are in People magazine, that may make movies about, or that's on the news, and that these people have some superpower that I don't have, or that it's something that's a really big deal that you have to find a way to achieve. And I just knew that this wasn't actually accurate, and I just needed to do some more homework on it so I could be at peace with understanding the resilient nature of who we are. And I thought, well, given that we're in this period still experiencing COVID, and it's a global experience, it's not just individual. I don't know that there is any place it has not touched. So we're all experiencing it, and we are all having to deep dive into our own versions of resilience, personally, in a community, globally. And I just thought, I'd like to investigate more of an intimate level because we've really had a lot of time to spend with ourselves. And it hasn't necessarily been pleasant. It's been uh, interesting. We've learned a lot. We've learned what we like, what we don't like. We learn thoughts that we like, thoughts that we don't like, people that we like, people that we don't like. So <clears throat> I just think that we all need to give ourselves a little bit more credit of how we make it through just the day anymore. And I think that to acknowledge that, that is where grace lies in resilience, to be able to acknowledge ourselves, to be able to, okay, so there's a definition, let me read this to you, uh, that I looked up. I looked up a whole bunch of different definitions of resilience, and everyone has their amazing words that they put down. But this one spoke to me, and it said, resilience is the ability to withstand adversity and bounce back from difficult life events. But being resilient does not mean that people don't experience stress, emotional upheaval, and suffering. But it did go on to say that those lacking resilience get easily overwhelmed and may turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms. I don't know, I just kind of want to reframe that, <clears throat> those lacking resilience word. I prefer to say those unaware of their resilient nature, because no one lacks resilience. First of all, we all came through that birth canal. Just that alone gave us this resilient chip for this incarnation, okay? We made it, we're here. <sighs> Ernest Holmes says, <clears throat> you must maintain a close communion with your true center. Your creative power is not an act of will, it is rather an act of your willingness to believe. 
Now, I've read a lot of Ernest Holmes, so I think um, it's probably safe to say that somewhere he said, <clears throat> your creative power is not an act of will. It is rather an act of your willingness to believe in yourself, to believe in yourself. Because no one knows the depth of our own resilience except for us. People might think they do. We all make up stories about somebody else's resilience, somebody else's comeback story. But our relationship with resilience is a very intimate one, and one I suspect that most of us don't even recognize on a daily basis. But we are resilient by nature. Now, I'm not sure why I thought that the resilient person was somebody special with superpowers, but resilience doesn't show preference to anyone. It's just a matter of revealing it. It's in all of us, and it's about how we recognize it within ourselves, because no matter what, no matter how small, how large the event, the situation that we are navigating, that element of resilience matters to us. So <clears throat> we see resilience in a lot of different things. First of all, if we played a drinking game to how many times I'm going to say resilience this evening, we could all be very drunk. <laughs> I tried not to. I tried to find synonyms. I couldn't, so forgive me. And if you're at home, don't drink too much. <clears throat> Even if you started now, you could have a nice buzz on. Anyway, I digress. Resilience, it's the injured athlete, <clears throat> the one that goes to physical therapy and gets themselves back on that surfboard, gets them back on the mat, gets them back on the field, gets that dancer back on stage. It's the brokenhearted person that comes back from a terrible divorce or a terrible heartache or becoming a widow and getting back on the playing field of dating again, looking for love. It is the restaurant finds a way to stay open and support their staff and their community during this unprecedented time. It's the restaurant that knows that the best thing is to close its doors and envision what is next. Boy, do we miss four and 20. It's the town that rebuilds after natural disasters, and it's the people that stay to build them, but it's also the people who choose to make their life somewhere else. And it's the depressed person that simply makes it out of bed just to brush their teeth in the morning. It's everything, everything. Waking up is simply an act of resilience. And the grace within resili the resilient spirit, it comes with a daily intention to ask for help. And we start out by praying. We start out by connecting with the divine, connecting with that inherent nature that we are a unique vessel, a unique channel for spirit to work and operate through each and every single one of us. And we matter, and we matter to someone, and we matter to ourselves. And that is, that is the intimate relationship with the design, with the divine, to know we get up in the morning and we connect with spirit and know that if we can't find our purpose, we will find a way to see a glimmer of it when we've lost our way. Resilience does not mean going it alone. <clears throat> Let's just take Simone Biles. Oh my gosh. Is she just not an inspiration? I mean, to me, she's one of the most inspiring people on the planet today. Her integrity with herself, with her relationship to self that she must have, and I can only imagine, because I don't know her thoughts, I'm just a very sophisticated speculator. <laughs> I would say I'm an elite speculator. I think people who speculate all think that they are elite speculators. But what we're witnessing is the courage, the courage to love yourself, to know yourself well enough, and to love yourself enough to say, hey, I'm worth stepping back. I am worth more to myself than what anyone thinks of me. Pushing myself is not resilience. It's actually dangerous. Stepping back and then recalibrating, that is resilience. That is knowing thyself. Know thyself. 
because it is the closest and the most important relationship we'll ever have. It's with ourself. And when I say ourself, I mean the divine, because the divine lives within us. It isn't something out there. It's something in here. And I got, you know, when people get up at these award shows and they, and they thank they thank God. They thank God. And I think, you know, it's really OK for you to thank yourself, because it's the God within you that got you where you are. It's not something out there. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I always look at it and go, you know, it's not a big ego to say, I thank myself for getting up every day. I thank myself for going to those auditions. I thank myself for working with jerks like Harvey Weinstein. I thank myself for making through it. I persevered, and here I am. So yeah, right? So yeah. I never had an experience with Harvey, so don't think that there's some secret story there. There's not. So how many times do we think that we should push ourselves um, at what we should be doing? Because we don't want to let people down. We worry what they'll think. It's important to know our boundaries and know what we're capable of doing, capable of knowing what we're capable of, what's just beyond our reach, and also what is unsafe for us. We have to honor it. That is the relationship we owe within ourselves to cultivate. Simone Biles is a very easy example, as she's one of the biggest, on one of the biggest stages right now. But she is not someone for us to compare ourselves to. She is someone for us to be inspired by. Because all of us have our struggles, and all of our struggles matter. And some of them are very private. And while we are witnessing what seem to be most of her struggles, I promise you there are things we'll never know about because it's not our business. So one day, I came to church. This was about nine years ago. I came to church, and uh, I saw a friend of mine here, and she did not look well. She had been crying, I could tell, so I followed her into the bathroom, and I said, OK, so what's going on? You don't look so good. Can I support you in any way? And she wiped her tears, and she looked at me, and she was like, oh, I can't believe you are the one in the bathroom with me. Because just this morning, I was throwing a tantrum, and I was thinking, that Joe, Ann O'Brien, she has it made. There's nothing wrong in her life. Her life is perfect. And I looked at her, and I smiled, and I said, really? Because I just got evicted this week. And she looked at me, and we chatted, and we laughed a little bit about it. <clears throat> so I want to talk about that eviction. Getting evicted was what it was. It was a notice on my door, because that's what I saw it as. It was a notice on my door till I could reset my sale. And I did. I paid my overdue rent, and then I moved out. I moved in with a longtime friend whose wife had passed away. She was my friend as well. And it was a win-win situation. I had a safe place to land, and he had company and a built-in babysitter for his son. Now, I could have chosen to shame myself. I could have chosen to shame myself for not being the superwoman, <sighs> that person who was going to maintain her independence at all cost, find a way to keep my apartment. But let me tell you why I was evicted. I was just too tired. I was simply tired. And the reason I was tired was because I was only several months on the other side of chemo for having had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This September, 10 years this September. 10 years. It really took the wind out of my sails. You wouldn't be able to tell it from my Facebook postings, but it did. It took the wind out of my sails temporarily, because I am standing here today, and I am evidence of the resilience that developed. But it didn't develop wrapped in a nice little blue Tiffany box. <clears throat> it was rough. It was rough, and it wasn't rough. It was a lot of things. Now, I know I tend to be a very grand personality, and I'm not shy about being center stage. And I did look at the whole thing as an adventure, but it wasn't really a fun adventure all the time. And it wasn't like because I lost my hair. Losing my hair was a blast. I, I was like, you know, I never would have done this. So I was kind of forced to do it. And I thought, this is the only time I'll ever rock the Annie Lennox or the Sinead O'Connor look. So I, was, I thought that was cool. And also, you know, 
There, I, I love my hair. However, getting out the door bald, it's so much faster. It is such an underrated thing for women. Try it. So, um, so I digress. But you know, there was a bunch of things that really supported me going through a very difficult time. And trust me, people had opinions of what it must be like for me to be going through. Like, did you examine your entire life? Your life flashed before your eyes? I'm like, no, it really didn't. I just one step in front of the other. I just had to stay present. First person I say thank you to is my surgeon. I got to thank him a million times over because he used the power of suggestion to me. My friend always says, um, words are spells, Joanne. Words are spells. And she's right. And he cast a really good spell on me because he said in confidence to me that this was simply a blip on the radar. It was just a speed bump. And I chose to believe him. I went, he knows better than I. He's seen it before. He's been through that. He wouldn't lie to me. I'm going to trust that guy. The second thing that I <clears throat> learned through the beginning of that experience was that I was going to come up with a really good reason. Now, I have a beef with people who say things happen for a reason. I'm sorry. I know we've all said it. But I just don't think that that is true. I think that things happen. And then we make a reason out of it. Things happen. Because if you say things happen for a reason, it implies that you don't know what that reason, and you're just kind of like, you're just a victim of this thing that happened, and it's for you to find out. And it's not for you to find out. It's for you to create and design. So for me, I decided that my lesson from this whole crappy cancer experience was going to be boundaries. I was going to learn boundaries. Because up until then, I really didn't have good boundaries. And this stupid tumor had just shown up with no permission. It did not send me a memo. It did not tell me it was arriving at LAX. It just showed up. It had been hanging out there for a while. But it was a, it was a tumor located in one place. But it was matted around my carotid artery, my jugular vein, and my laryngeal nerve. It was my very life force that it was just suffocating. And it was just suffocating it. And it wasn't able to be removed. It was only be able to be shrunken. So it's, it's still there, maybe. I don't really know. It's probably getting mad at me right now. <clears throat> but so I decided to learn boundaries. And this was a very strong, in my opinion, when I look back and I reflect, this was like such a strong evidence of having this resilient nature. I decided to honor myself. And then I did something else. I went to my tools. We all have tools. Suze Webster brought her tools last week. We all have tools. And mine are many decks of cards. And one of my favorite ones is the Ascended Master deck. So I took out my Ascended Masters, and I got quiet. And I prayed, and I said, OK, just give me three things that I'm going to focus on during this entire experience. And I pulled three cards. And the first card I got was trust, the god Vishnu. Trust, this is perfect. I'm trusting that spirit has got me on this one. I'm trusting that all my doctors are exactly where they need to be. I'm trusting that I have the right chemo cocktail. I am trusting that I'm going to be financially supported during this entire time. I decided that trust was going to carry me through. And then the next card I pulled was meditate. Well, that did not go over well. And I knew, like, God, damn, meditation. All right, I'll do it, I'll do it. I mean, you know, we all love to meditate, but we all don't love to meditate. And we don't love to be told we need to meditate more. I'm speaking for myself, but I know there's some of you. So I got the meditate card, great. And then the last card I pulled was Apollo. Focus on your strengths. Well, my strength is humor. I know my strength is humor, so I'm going to focus on that. And then the last thing I did was I asked for help. I used my boundaries to ask for help. I posted on Facebook, and I sent a letter to everyone, and I said, here's the deal. This is what I need, and this is what I don't need. I do not need anyone telling me what course of action I should take, because I've already decided, and I already trust in that path. So please don't offer me cocktails of cottage cheese and flax oil to reduce all of my tumors. OK, it's just not going to help me right now, but thank you. I didn't need long walks on the beach, because frankly, people offered me long walks at the beach. And they have, some of them were people I didn't want to walk with on the beach when I was healthy, <laughs> never mind while I didn't feel so well. 
I'm just saying. And, and I said to people, what I need from you is I need you to pray for me, and I need funny. Send me things that will make me laugh. And I got both of that. I got prayer, and I got a lot of humor. And it helped me, and it helped other people, because they knew what to do. It's, it stinks. Even now, having been through it, I still don't really always know exactly what to say. So I just listen. I go, I've been there if you want to talk. And that's it, because we don't know what to say all the time. But I just did what I had to do. I am no different than anyone. I did what I had to do, what I knew to do in that, those moments. And there were moments where I was really cranky and I wasn't fun to be around. And moments where I really laughed at myself, being bald, walking around in a towel and slippers in my apartment, really looking bloated from the prednisone. I was like, well, this is, don't put this on your dating profile. <laughs> but it was funny and I laughed at myself because it was just temporary. I knew I was going to look different the next day and the next day because we all do. And then there were some examples of things I did to push myself, or I entertained the thought of doing to push myself. I thought, you know, you have all this time on your hands, which I didn't really, but I thought, you're sick, you're home, write a one-woman show. You know what, make it a musical. You're going to write a one-woman musical show about this, and you'll learn French. You're going to learn French. <laughs> all these things that I had no interest in doing when I was healthy, why would I do them when I'm sick? So I kind of let all that stuff go. But you know, no one really knows your resilient nature but you. But it does help when our friends remind us. And I've had many friends remind me of the struggles that I went through and how I, how I pulled myself through and how I pulled myself from the dark places. Because we do visit those dark places. Everyone does. Every single one of us visits that. But we all have tools to pull ourselves out. It's just we punish ourselves for living in that dark place. And we don't realize it's just temporary and you're going to get there. You're going to get there through a book, through a show, through a song. But the truth is, you're the one who gets you there. Something else just inspired you. It is our faith in God that works through us, in us, and as us. As we are one with spirit, yet we are separate in physical form. <clears throat> all of us have come here with different skills and different purposes. And we are always perfecting those skills and always perfecting those purposes. Or sometimes we're still trying to figure out what our purpose is. I guess what I'm really trying to say is that each and every single one of us are spectacular. We are amazing. The fact that we are here is just simply the grace of God. We're here, we made it, and this is a beautiful life. And we all go through really crappy things. Somewhere I read, when we learn to become resilient, we learn how to embrace the beautifully broad spectrum of the human experience. We have to acknowledge that our, existent, our existence matters. And we get to pick why it matters and what it matters for. We get to design the reasons things happen. And isn't that so much more powerful? Isn't that so much more empowering? This is the reason it happened. This is the reason. I decided the reason. The stories of victory that we read and watch on the news or in movies are just reminders for each and every single one of us. We're no different than the hero. We are our own heroes. Be inspired by it. Take some of it for yourself. It's why we love stories of victory. Katherine Hepburn said, defeat is the soil from which victory blooms. Actually, I think what she said was, Defeat is the soil from which victory blooms. <laughs> yeah, I know that was terrible. <laughs> but it made me laugh. <sighs> Sometimes getting out of bed is a victory. And I know we've all experienced that. In Science of Mind, we believe three things to be absolutely true. There is one mind back of all things. Your thought is the most powerful thing you have and love is a better way to be. So what do we think? What do we tell ourselves? And how do we course correct when our thoughts get off track? Because during this time, there is much grace in our ability to hold the space for others who are struggling. But we have to hold the space for ourselves. We have to remember that this too shall pass. And how will I navigate this present moment? Things we can do to strengthen our relationship with self Acknowledge. 
acknowledge ourselves for the smallest of wins on our best days and our worst days. Never diminish ourselves by comparing ourselves to someone else, because comparison is the thief of joy. Reflect on past challenges and realize you survived because of you. Acknowledge that it is more than okay to ask for help. And in everything, give thanks. Say, I am so blessed. Realize that life is messy for everyone. It's how you respond or how you eventually respond. Dr. Mark always refers to that quote, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but we don't pitch a tent there. But it's OK to pitch a tent for a little while. It's OK. Five minutes, five hours, five days, five months. But use your tools and get up and move forward. The tools are there, but it is us. It is us that uses them. It's human to be uncomfortable. And it's human to feel untethered. And it is the grace of an intimate relationship with self and the divine through self-care, self-love, patience, self-awareness that strengthens the resilient nature of the self that is already there. Nelson Mandela said, do not judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. Well, I get what he's saying, but there's a little part of me that says, listen, judgy judgerson, don't judge me at all. Judge yourself and give yourself a 10. Let's pray. So I invite us all right now to turn within. <clears throat> we turn within and we give thanks for that resilient nature within us. We give thanks for getting up. We give thanks for paying our bills. We give thanks for asking for help. We give thanks for trying and trying again. We give thanks for everything, for in everything there is a gift. We get to decide that gift. We get to decide the reason things happen. We get to choose. And I choose to recognize that God is divine, that God is unconditional love, and that God is the source of all love. God is the all-forgiving source of compassion and mercy and understanding. And God is the loving parent of this cosmos. And God's perfect work is done through love. And I know that each and every single one of us are divinely connected to this source, to this infinite power, this almighty presence. Every single one of us are one in spirit. While we are separate in physical form, we are one in the mind of God. And I simply know that we are all eternal beings, eternal souls, as we were, as we are in this moment, and as we ever shall be. And I know that there is the unchangeable nature of spirit operating through each and every single one of us. That no matter how we feel, when we feel separate, that spirit knows no opposite. Spirit knows we are one. Spirit has our back. I simply know that when there is health challenges, that on the other side there is the truth of perfection. We are not our condition. We are holy. I know that where our creative expression lies, whether it be in the arts or in our career, our work, I know that whether it is in full abundance or whether it is on pause, that there is a fountain of creativity just there waiting to work through us individually that we are the unique vessel to create and to express. And I know 
that where there is prosperity, it shows up in so many forms, financial, prosperity of friends, prosperity of love, prosperity of space, prosperity of thought, just knowing our thoughts are the riches that we so deserve. And I know that the loving relationships we desire to have are simply there. And I know that in any relationship that experiences challenge, that on the other side of it, there is a place to get in and there is a place to know the truth. And I simply know right now that there are many individual intentions that we all have. So I just take a moment for us to be quiet and gain a little guidance and some clarity, and set our own intentions in this moment. We know that God is at the center of all situations for which we set our intentions and that good is being revealed. And so together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And for this, we express our gratitude. We give thanks. We give thanks for our time together we give thanks for this beautiful sanctuary. We give thanks for everyone who's come together to make this evening happen. We give thanks for the beautiful voice of Mary Island. We give thanks for this church, and we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And in this gratitude, I simply release my word into law knowing it is done. And on the unseen side of life, all is perfect as it was, as it is in this very moment, and as it ever shall be. And so it is. And together we say, Thank you, thank you, thank you for that wonderful talk. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. Uh, for those of you who are in the sanctuary, if you're dropping off a donation, we have two boxes at the back in the foyer where you can drop them off as you're leaving the sanctuary at the end of the evening. For those of you who are on with us online, there are several ways that you can make your donations. Uh, one is to call the church office. We'll be here for about 15 minutes after the service uh, to take your call if you'd like to uh, uh, give a gift via credit or debit card over the phone. The number is 818-762-7566. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that takes you to the page where you can make a one-time or set up recurring donations. 
or you can also text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And once again, however you continue to donate, we so, so appreciate your tithes. So with that, feeling our intentions for giving and sharing with others, let us hold our hands to our hearts, our gifts to our hearts, and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. So as we bring our service to a close, I want to begin by thanking everyone who was of service this evening. Uh, let's start out there in virtual land. Thank you, thank you to practitioner Carrie Brown, who's holding vigil for us this evening. And Liz Racy, thank you for being there for uh, Facebook Live support. Yes. <laughs> Zoom support. We have Barbara Berg as our NHCRS host, Alma Almaferez as our Zoom host, and Ray Regan as our Zoom associate. Thank you. <laughs> well, once again, to Adam in the back there for making sure that we are seen and heard up here. To Colleen Butler, who is here to greet us and usher us in this evening. To our wonderful sanctuary team of Doreen Remo. Brenda Jordan over here on camera too. Mark Kroll back there at the back. Blair Thompson. <laughs> what a team. <laughs> and of course, Mary, thank you so much for beautiful, beautiful music. Sam couldn't be with us. I'm, we're so grateful for the pre-recorded music that he prepared for us. But thank you for just making it feel so full. <laughs> and of course, hello. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful job. <laughs> okay, so, oh, and thank you, by the way, to all of you for being here and all of you who've joined us. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, a uh, few announcements before we leave here. Uh, again, donations, you can call in over the phone. Again, the number is 818-762-7566 nhcrs.org forward slash give or texting the word give to 818-457-3419. Uh, we also just want to remind you that if you join uh, Amazon Smile, so it's smile.amazon.com and make your purchases, you can set up um, where uh, the church receives a portion. Um, so you don't pay anything more. It's just a portion comes to us and we just so appreciate people who have done that. And I love getting the report saying, this many times North Hollywood Church has gotten this much money. And we're like, 
Yay. K-Hub gives me so much reason to buy more. Um, <laughs> okay, being silly there. Um, prayer with a practitioner who's available after service on Zoom. And uh, if you're here and would like prayer with a practitioner, just uh, sign the book in the back. Give us your information. We'll have a practitioner uh, call and pray with you. You can also email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office. And option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. And we check those every evening. Uh, so we get those prayer requests out to all of our practitioners. And just so you know, and since Mary's here, I'd like to acknowledge her ministry. Uh, if during the week you would like to just be uplifted with a word of truth and hear a prayer, uh, we have a practitioner every week that records a reading and uh, a prayer. So you can just during the week call and be uplifted and hear the word of truth. And thank you, Mary, for continuing with that ministry. It's called Dial a Prayer. Wednesday evening service will be back next week. Again, meditation starts at 6.50, service at 7, both live and in person and on Zoom. And our guest speaker next week is practitioner Bill Carpenter, and I'll be joining him. And Bill's topic is walking the primrose path. Okay. <laughs> our grief support group uh, this group is facilitated by our practitioner, uh, Carol Winokur, who does a masterful job. Anyone going through any kind of grief um, that will be meeting, they'll be meeting this Sunday, 1 p.m. on Zoom. All are welcome. We'll be having a celebration of life uh, for our beloved congregant, Taryn McEwen. Um, so the service will be here in the sanctuary Saturday, August 14th at 4 p.m. And we'll also be uh, live streaming it on Zoom. So the Zoom link is available on our website if you're unable to come in person. Um, Women, Food, and God Workshop with Reverend Nadine Weathersby. That will be on Saturday, August 21st from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Lunch is included. And you can sign up on our website for this wonderful workshop based on the book with the same name by Janine Roth. And the cost for the workshop is $30. And the book is available on Amazon. And our youth church reopens on August 15th. We're really excited that we'll be welcoming back our youth ages 3 through 18. Uh, beginning that Sunday, August 15th, 9.45 service only, since we're just having the one service at this time. And uh, for parents who have children under three, they're welcome to uh, be in the mommy, daddy, and me room in the back there. And our Zoom virtual patio continues. So those of you who are still connecting to us virtually, uh, if you want to join 20 minutes before or stay on after service, you can continue to visit with your fellow congregants. Our men's group continues to meet every Sunday from 11 to 11.30. All men are welcome. Uh, that's on Zoom. And our Zoom meditation is every morning. I see a few of you here. It's nice to be here in person. <laughs> but we just saw each other this morning. I cleaned up good, didn't I? <laughs> so that's every morning from 8 to 8.15 a.m. And for any information about anything going on here at the church, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, where you can also sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And also, if you would like to be inspired with more of Mary's music, uh, you can email her at M-A-R, so Mare, the first three letters of her name, and then her last, H-Y-L-C at A-O-L dot com. <laughs> so, are you just flooded with emails? <laughs> You're, get ready for it, okay. <laughs> so with that, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to call Joanne back up here to give us our benediction. <clears throat> I just have to say I'm so thrilled that we're back together in church. It's such a good thing. So I just invite us all once again to turn within. Mm. Turn within knowing 
in acknowledging that presence of spirit that fills the sanctuary, that fills each and every single one of us, that we are all divinely blessed vessels of this one mind, knowing that we have all come here to experience a greater expression of spirit, a greater expression of truth. Some of us have come here to just simply sit and be among each other. And I know that that coming together shifts us in ways we don't know. There is something about being together, praying together, being in the silence together. So I simply acknowledge this church, this teaching, the beautiful spirits that fill our community. And I know that as we have been divinely guided and protected to be here, and those who are divinely guided to sit on the sofa and watch, that we are protected on our way home and that spirit surrounds us with that divine guidance. I just express my gratitude for everything. I express my gratitude for the resilience this community has demonstrated through all of the people that have come together to make it happen and keep us going to all of us who have stayed together on Zoom, Facebook, and patiently waited to be here together again. For this I give thanks, and for so much more. And so I simply release my gratitude, my words, into the law of mind, knowing it is done. And on the unseen side of life, all unfolds perfectly. And so it is, and together we say, Amen.